before you. You thought evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save a great many people alive. That's in the book of Genesis, the 50th chapter, the 20th verse. How have you been hurt by people who has meant evil against you, my friend, whose words or actions have hurt you, whose inaction has hurt you? If you have lived in the world long enough, you will have been hurt by people and situations, both intentionally and unintentionally. Have you learned to deal with it? Today, we will be looking at why it is so important that you do not ignore your hurts and why you must deal with them. We will also be looking at how you can learn to deal with them. Take a look, my friend, at the Bible verse we began with. For context, you have to realize that this is a statement that Joseph is making to his brothers 20 or so years after they sold him into slavery. They had originally planned to kill him, but God intervened, and two of his brothers, Reuben and Judah, convinced the rest to sell him off instead. Can you, my friend, imagine being sold by your own brothers? Can you imagine even how traumatizing and hurtful it must have been? to hear your brothers talk of wanting to kill you. Because of his brothers, Joseph, who had always been a free man, had to learn to become a slave to another man and was wrongfully accused and even ended up in prison for a time. We know that God was with him, but yet he doesn't shield him from the hurt. You cannot look at Joseph's story and miss the many tragedies and hurts that he suffered at the hands of different people, starting with those who were supposed to be the closest to him. Yet, my friend, many years later, when the roles had reversed and he is in the position to get back at his brothers because they are now dependent on him for food and he is second in command in Egypt, this, my friend, is what he tells them. He says, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save a great many people alive genesis the 50th chapter the 20th verse the first thing my friend you realize here is that he didn't deny that they had done him evil he didn't deny that he had been hurt by them neither does he deny that it had been intentional on their part he doesn't try to lie and deceive himself in saying that it was a good deed when it wasn't or that it wasn't hurtful when it was. How many times, my friend, do you deny that you've been hurt when you have? How many times do you look away from that hurt that is festering in your heart and deny its existence because you are scared to face it? You need, my friend, to deal with your hurt and let it stop festering. Stop covering it under darkness and bring it out in the light. I cannot imagine how painful it must be but there is no way to deal with it without recognizing it. Jesus, my friend, promises that he will bind up the brokenhearted, but he cannot bind you up or heal you if you keep claiming not to be brokenhearted. Who hurt you, my friend? Was it your parents, by their words and actions? Or perhaps it was someone in your family? Did someone close take advantage of you like Joseph's brothers? They may not have tried to kill you, but they may have hurt you in other ways. Someone at church may have hurt you. It may even have been a pastor or a leader, and perhaps you feel like it is wrong to feel hurt from these people, especially when they are in any kind of authority over your life. You are confused about how to feel, so you push it to the side and decide to never look in its direction again. But just because you decide to ignore the hurt does not mean that it goes away. Instead, you give it power and it begins to control your life. The hurt you don't deal with will continue to deal with you. The hurt you don't address gives the devil the opportunity to capitalize on it. You may be among the people who acknowledge the hurt but build their lives around it. You may not have noticed before now but have you let your hurt become the cornerstone of your life? When you want to move forward or take a new step, is it the thing that pulls you back? Because you remember the incident and all of a sudden it has the ability 
to define what you can or cannot do. This is what happens when you don't deal with your hurt. When you either ignore it or focus so much on it that it is all you talk or think about, it starts to affect the decisions you make because now you are making decisions from an unhealthy place, a place of hurt and pain. It affects how you see everything because you look at everything and judge every situation from the lens of hurt. So nothing anyone does is innocent any longer because all of a sudden you remember the person who intentionally set out to hurt you. It makes you bitter and it starts to affect your relationships. It begins to spill over into your interactions with people, even those who had nothing to do with it. Can you imagine if Joseph had become bitter or refused to deal with the hurt his brothers or Potiphar's wife had caused him? It would have been difficult for him to trust the keeper of the prison enough to have a great relationship with him to the point where he left the running of the prison in Joseph's hands. It would have been difficult to trust Pharaoh's wine presser to not take advantage of him also and not to forget him once he was out. The reason, my friend, we don't see all that happened to Joseph is he chose to deal with his hurt. God has made provision, my friend, for your broken heart but you must learn to take advantage of what has been provided. He has said that if you come to him, he will bind your heart. If you focus on him and not on what they did, you will find healing for your soul. Acknowledge your hurt and then lay it at his feet. Take up the healing that he loves and make the decision to forgive the hurt and let it go. God, my friend, is the specialist of turning things that others meant for evil to your good. Joseph understood this, which is why he was able to let go of the hurt his brothers and others caused him. Take a look, for example, at what he says to them, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save a great many people alive. He said, I know you wanted to hurt me. I know you planned to, and you did. But the truth is, God took what you were doing, and turned it around for my good and the good of others. You might have started out trying to hurt me, but God finished it by using it to promote me and preserve the lives of a lot of people. Do you know this? That no matter what happens in your life, God is previous. Nothing can surprise him. Nothing, my friend, leaves him unprepared. When you know that his plans and purposes for you are greater than whatever the enemy can pull together through people, it is easy to let go of the hurt because you know that the blessing is greater. What can people do to you that will derail the blessing of God? Absolutely nothing. It doesn't mean that what happens will no longer hurt, but you can choose to put aside the hurt because of the greater blessing on its way to you that you see. This, my friend, is what Jesus did. In Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the second verse, the Bible says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Fix your eyes, my friend, on Jesus and forget the hurts. Let them go so they cease to control your life. Understand that God is weaving those hurts into a greater story for your glory. Refuse to dwell and focus on the hurt so much that you miss your blessing from God, that you miss what God is doing in your life. The best, my friend, is yet to come. Hallelujah. May God bless you, dear child of God.